Okay, so you have a bunch of data in a Google Sheet and you have a lot of people collaborating on it. They're really happy about using Google Sheets, but you need this data over in your PHP application. In this video, we're gonna show you how to use it. We'll start in the Google Developer Console by creating a new project. I'm gonna name mine Google Sheets and PHP, but you can name yours whatever works for you. Click Create, and when the project is done creating, click Enable API and Services. Scroll down to the Google Sheets API and click the Enable button you'll find here on this screen. Once the API is enabled, click the Create Credentials button, choose the Google Sheets API, and that we'll be accessing it from a web server, and select Application Data. Select No for Compute Engine, and click What Credentials Do I Need? Give your service account a name, I'll call mine Sheets PHP, and give it a role of project owner. Clicking continue down below here will give us a JSON file that holds what we need for our credentials to access the API. Inside of my project directory, I'll use Composer to require Google's API client to access the Google Sheets API. Once that's installed, I'll copy over that JSON file that we got from Google and store it locally as credentials.json. Next, I'll open everything up in a code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but feel free to use whatever works for you. Inside of a file called sheets.php, we'll bring in Google's API client that we just got from Composer by pulling in vendor autoload.php. Next, we'll create a Google API client by calling new Google underscore client. Using our client object, we'll set the application name. I'm gonna call mine Google Sheets and PHP. It really doesn't matter what name you give this here, it's just for you. And then we'll set the scopes by calling client set scopes. The scope here is going to be Google underscore service underscore sheets spreadsheets. Then we'll set the access type. The access type for this application will be offline. Next, we'll give the client the auth config that we saved into credentials.json by calling set auth config and passing in that file path. Now we can create a new Google service sheets object passing in the client configuration that we just specified above. Now we're ready to move on to the spreadsheet we're gonna work with. We need access to our spreadsheet ID. We're gonna to have to pass that for each of the calls that we make. But what spreadsheet are we going to work with? Well, I found this giant 116th Congress spreadsheet that's available as a Google Sheet, and that's what we're gonna use. If you just Google for that, what you're gonna to need to do is create a copy of it into your own drive. So go to File, Make a Copy, and then just copy it to your drive. And once that's done, we're gonna grab the ID. The ID is right up here in the URL after spreadsheet slash D. Grab the ID and come back and paste it here into this spreadsheet ID variable. While we're on the topic of the spreadsheet, we also need to share that spreadsheet with the email address that we'll find inside of credentials.json. So go to where it says client underscore email, copy this email address, take it over to your spreadsheet and click share, and then paste it in here where it says share with others and click send. This will give our application access to the spreadsheet. Okay, let's log out some data. We're gonna log out the first name, last name, and party. So that's columns F, E, and D from rows two down through eight. So we need to specify a range, and this will look like sheet name, which is Congress that you can find at the bottom of the spreadsheet, and then an exclamation point, and then the range. That's gonna be D2 colon F8. So we get rows two through eight from columns D, E, and F. So then we're going to use the service to call spreadsheets underscore values and call get on that. The parameters that this is gonna take is the spreadsheet ID and the range that we just specified. Then we'll get the values out of that by calling response get values. Okay, now that we have the values, we need to check to make sure they actually exist. So if the values array is empty, then we know we didn't get anything back from the range that we specified. So we'll simply print out no data found. Otherwise, we know that we do have values and each value will re represent a row from the spreadsheet. Each row will have three values, so I'll create a mask that shows 10 characters for the first string, 10 characters for the second, and then the remaining characters for the third string, and we're left aligning the middle value. Next, we'll loop through each one of the values as a row, and for each row, we're simply going to print out the three values in reverse order. So we'll call sprintf, we're gonna pass in the mask that we specified above, and then we'll pass in the third column, the second column, and the first column, so that's F, E, and D. So first name, last name, and then party from the columns in the spreadsheet, and we'll print those out to the console. 
Opening up the terminal, I can run php sheets.php, and lo and behold, there we go. We've got the data that we expect to get back from the sheets for those columns. Okay, so that's how we can read data from the spreadsheet. You can modify these, this range to get different data, but that's the basics. How about updating? So I want to update E2 and F2, so the first name and last name for row 2 in this spreadsheet. I'm going to update it to be my last name and first name. So we'll specify E2 to F2 as the range, and then we need to create a values array. The values array will be an array of arrays. Each array inside of the values array represents a row of values in the spreadsheet. So the first value in here will be the last name, the second will be the first name, so Brent Schooley, and then that's it for our values because we're only going to update one row. So now we need to create a request. So we'll have a body variable here and we're going to call new Google underscore service underscore sheets underscore value range because we want to specify the value range that we're going to update. And we'll give this the values array that we created above. So that's the body for the request. Next, we need to specify any parameters we would need for this request. In this case, we're just going to specify how the values need to be input into the spreadsheet. In this case, we're just going to specify that we want to use the raw value that is provided to the spreadsheet. At this point, we have everything we need to make the call. So we'll set a result and we'll call with the service, we'll call spreadsheet underscore values, and then we'll call update on that. And we'll pass in the spreadsheet ID as before and the range as before. And then we'll pass in the body for the request and the parameters to use for the request. So just to recap, we specify a range and some values inside of a value range and then pass that off to the update method. Okay, give this a save and open up the terminal and run php sheets.php. And once it's done, if we head over to the spreadsheet, we'll see the first name and last name for our row two have been updated to my name. Okay, excellent. Now what if we wanted to add a completely new row down at the bottom? Well, the values will be free form, but we could make them correspond to the columns. So what we're going to do in here is update the values. I'm just going to put this is a new row as an array of strings. And then we'll come up to the range and we'll just specify that we want to add it to the sheet by making the range just the sheet name. The body and params will stay the same for this, but we have one more thing that we need to specify this time, and that's how we want to insert the data. So we'll create another variable here called insert, and inside of this one, we'll specify the insert data option, and we're gonna set that to insert rows because we're going to be inserting rows at the end of the spreadsheet. Instead of calling update, we want to call append to append rows to the end of the spreadsheet. And down here after the params parameter, we want to pass the insert parameter. Give everything a save, run php sheets.php, and head back over to the spreadsheet, and you'll see we've added this is a new row down at the bottom. So that handles adding rows to the end of a spreadsheet. So we've covered how to create, read, and update data. There's a lot more you can do with this API, so please feel free to explore it and let us know what you build when you do.